Hello everyone, I'm Ultraviolet4 and this is going to be a little bit of a special video. I'm going to show you a real-time speedrun, but it's not going to be your regular speedrun. I need to give you a bit of context actually, but while I do that, I'm going to leave up this wonderful picture of the video game I played in the point two one tournament which just recently ended. Glorious. <laughs> Alright. So about a week ago, I was hanging out in Discord and Gorglamo, or Gorg for short, revealed to us the secret of his recent rise to real-time speedrunning prominence. If you've not heard of Gorg before, in the recent tournament, he, he had the fastest real-time run with 36 minutes 47, which is one of the fastest times ever. I think that puts him as the third fastest player of all time. But yes, he revealed to us the secret of playing that fast. So what he's been doing while speedrunning is creating a macro that instead... Okay, I think he's keeping his tab button, but he's also making a macro that when you press it, does five tabs. If you're not... I expect if you, you're watching this, you're familiar with crawl, but tab is the auto attack button. So instead of pressing auto attack five times to fight, and that's probably what's well, definitely the button you most press in a real time speedrun, he's pressing his macro button and that's doing five key presses for him. So that was quite interesting. Um, in the four days after that, Man Man, who previously had a personal best time of 42 minutes 50 uh, put down a series of increasingly fast runs using an increasingly higher number of tabs per macro press so he did a 40 minutes 53 a 32 minutes 50 31 31 and finally 29 minutes 18 so he's the first quote-unquote human to break 30 minutes. So what does this mean um, in terms of speedrunning and what's happening with crawl speedrunning and where it's going? So I kind of knew that this sort of thing always had the potential to happen. But in the past, the only three real... I don't want to say the only real runners, but... The three most competitive runners were Demise, Shard1697, and me. And we kind of just, we didn't even speak about it, but it was kind of just like a gentleman's agreement, whereby we wouldn't try to do anything crazy in terms of making super crazy macros, and we wouldn't try to do crazy RC options and that sort of a thing. So while this potential line was always there, we never really had to think about it because none of us was pushing the boundaries. But in recent times, and I think part of that is probably my fault because of the vi the real-time videos I've made that have taught more people how to do it, uh, there have been an influx of new players who have also been real-time running. And, well, like with the case of Gorg and now Man Man, and I'm not sure who else has been trying now, but... Uh, they haven't really cared to push the boundaries, which, I, I mean, I don't blame them, but, um, yeah, it's getting a bit crazy, and it is crazy, because where does this stop now? So, there is a bot that plays Crawl, it's called QW, it's written by Elliptic. You'll see it run under lots of different names, because it's open source, so you can get it and you can play it, but they're all, they're all essentially the QW bot. And when QW plays online, it can win in under 10 minutes. So, and it this bot is entirely done with RC. So, the settings file is often called an RC file. And you can write Lua scripts in it. Which means, essentially, you can make an entire bot just by putting options into your options file. So, there's, there's a point somewhere between there where... You're entirely a bot, you're a human, or I don't know, you're half human, half bot, 
But at some point, you become QW. You may as well not even be playing yourself. You may as well just be a bot. And where that line is, I'm not entirely sure. And I feel like that's probably something that the community is going to have to decide because this raises a whole lot of questions. Um, like for instance, what, what are we going to call a human run? How are we going to police that? You could, for instance, require that anyone who wants to submit themselves for a world record um, give a video recording, but then would you be able to tell? Say someone macros two tabs per press. I don't think you'd be able to tell, so you would basically just have to rely on people's um, goodwill, I suppose. And another question is for future tournaments, um, there's a category where you get points based on your fastest real-time run. What's going to happen there? Uh, they're going to have to be new rules to stop people from making crazy Lua <laughs> scripts and doing insane multi-tab macros. I'm not really sure, but we'll see. Um, yeah, and I mean... Because it's not simply, it's not as simple as just saying, let's not have multi-tab macros. Although I think that's definitely something that shouldn't happen. But for instance, in every game, because I play Dwar Deep Dwarves of McCleb, um, I hit Control F to search for his altar. I go there, I worship him. I then go to my skill menu and I focus my invocation skill. All up, that probably takes, I don't know, four to five seconds. So I could macro that, that it'd be about eight key presses or something like that. Um, and if you do something like that 10 times in a run, as in you macro some complicated thing that always happens, like, I don't know, GD zero, there are a whole bunch. But you do that 10 times and we're talking about saving a minute, which is a very significant amount of time. Because I mean, you could macro all that stuff, going to Lair, going to GD zero, you could have a macro for all the different branches that you might go to. Um, you could macro all your scrolls. So I have options that do um, auto-inscribe, say, ID scrolls to R1. So I press R1 to read them at the moment. But then I could make another macro that does R1. So I could do all my scroll reading, etc. with one key press. Do we say no macros? Probably not, because... I don't know, I don't personally see a problem with, for instance, using a macro for an ability. So rather than pressing AC to summon a demon, hit a macro. But I don't know. Anyway, um, I've done a real-time speedrun using a 12-tab macro. Um, that is the amount that Man Man did in his 29-minute 18 run. Why 12? Why not 15? Why not 20? they could be even faster. True, um, I don't know, I haven't even really experimented with it. So this run that you're about to see was actually, I think my third run with it ever. I did one where I did it for a bit and quit. I did one where I died and this is the third. Maybe it's the fourth, but certainly I haven't played around with it much. I just wanted to see, one, how insane it is, and two, I wanted to demonstrate to you that probably it's not a good thing that we start doing it like this, it's having a macro slash Lua script arms race. So let's go. It's a, uh, the combo that I've been speedrunning with for a little while. It's a deep dwarf fighter of McCleb. At the beginning there, you saw me do a couple of um, skill targets. One for, I'm assuming that I'm going to be using a broad axe, which is 18 skill. And, oh my god, it's so fast. And one for dodging to take to 10. So yeah, every time I hit my my um, P key here, I'm doing 12 tabs. And if this is going too fast for you to follow, don't worry, because I can't really follow it either. <laughs> um, I'm not so good at it. I think oh, I'm nearly dying to grinder there. Oh yeah, I went so fast, I even went past D4. Because you want to start exploring from D4. That's where the temple can turn up. Um, but I think, because what I'm doing here is I've just been slamming the O key for auto explore and P to um, tab 12 times. I got magic mapping there, so I was just looking for the temple, but it's not. So back to D5. 
But the problem with spamming the macro with 12 tabs is that it lags the game out pretty badly. So I think, I don't think I'm going to, but if I were to practice a little bit more with this multi-tab macro, I think I could get very quick at it. He has a D5 McLeb altar. Uh, we found that before the temple, so that was cool. We got berserked there. Um, that Crimson Imp had a Chaos Dagger. I'm trying to get a chainmail. Yeah, there it is. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> there was an ogre somewhere in there. I don't know. We didn't even see it. Um, you shouldn't fight Crazy Youth in your regular runs, but in my speed runs, I like to go grab his cloak. All right. So we're gonna. The idea is we're gonna keep diving down to D8, which is where Lair can first start appearing, and then we'll start clearing again. It's the attack parts of this are just absolutely insane. <laughs> um, I had to I had to put up my auto fight stop because uh, when I'm playing normally speed running, I have it set at ten, as in you can tab all the way up to ten percent of your max HP. I picked up the scimitar of flaming there, so it's just a backup weapon for hydras in case we don't get a flaming axe. Um, you still want to use your demons from a club, but uh, it helps if you can also just whack with your sword. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, um, when you have a macro that tabs 12 times in a row and it doesn't stop until you have less than 10% HP, that first run I did, I kept nearly dying <laughs> because it was just like, oh my god. I press the attack 12 times button and then, yeah, suddenly in single HP digits. We just got a scroll of requirement. We went for weapon and we've got the obsidian axe. This is a very interesting weapon. It's a plus 14 broad axe of chopping, which is very strong. Uh, it has random curse on it, so even if you uncurse it, it will continue to curse itself. But it has a very interesting, two very interesting properties actually. First of all, it summons demons, which is why you might think they're McLeb demons, but no. They, these demons are all coming from the axe. Uh, this is a crazy vault. We're nearly dying to both an ogre mage and an ice dragon. But luckily this axe is really OP. So the other thing it does is it mesmerizes you. As in, every time you see an enemy, uh, you can no longer run away from it. <laughs> So, um, it's kind of good and bad for a speedrun. That's an RL ring. Um, that's pretty useful. It's not amazing, but by the time we get to Zot, having RL is very useful. Getting a scroll of torment is not so good though. Um, yeah, so in a speedrun where, real time run, where you're probably not going to be running away from enemies anyway. The Obsidian Axe's not running is not too much of a downside. Plus, then you have a plus 14 Broad Axe that's summoning demons, so it's really fast. Um, what's happened here is we've made it to D12, which is past where Lair spawns, but we haven't found Lair yet. So, um, there's actually a split level on D11. I'm going to have to go back upstairs. I don't think I've realized it yet. Um, I probably will at some point. I'm like... Wait, where's where? It's it's over the other side. You can see on the map actually. There's a new a new feature there that shows unknown. So I'm actually sensing over the other side, but can't get there. I'm like, where's where? How do I get there? <laughs> All right, there it is. So it's this upstairs. All right. It turns out actually that um, the Obsidian Axe, maybe it was faster at this part of the game, it probably was, but you'll see later on that it starts really slowing me down because I keep, oh man, well this is a bad situation, can't walk away from Berserk Rupert. <laughs> well, it's alright, got him. Uh, because there'll be some situations where I'm stuck mesmerized to some enemies that are across deep water and that sort of thing. 
Oh yeah, that was insane. The 12 tab macro there and there. Uh, that was like one second and that whole room was dead. It's just silly. Alright, so oppressive heat. <laughs> I hit the macro, killed the Hydra, and then I thought, oh, I better summon a demon for the Hydra, but it was already dead. So I'm, I'm looking for the volcano to go in. I don't always go into portals, but volcano is pretty good because um, RF items are great. And also having a flaming axe is also really good for Hydras. Uh, I mean, difficult to swap when you have the obsidian axe because it keeps cursing itself, but still good to have just in case you really need it. You can see there's a plate armor of fire resistance there. Yep. Grab it at some point. That's good. And boots of running are very good. They make you walk faster. In this case, they won't be boots of running away. They'll be boots of running in. <laughs> Running into fights faster. Alright, so we went down to layer 2. I think I saw there was another, I don't know, tab button's going way too fast. <laughs> tab button is going so fast, no one will ever notice what the portal was. I think there was a portal here. Maybe there was a labyrinth or something. So we just got another, I think that was another requirement scroll, and we just acquired a plus 9 plate armor with our poison. Very good. And another one there. This one's even better. This is a plus 10 crystal plate armor with R poison and RC, which is very good. Um, so for, oh, did we just skip it? I could have sworn I went in the ice cave. Maybe I'm crazy. Um, apparently not. So with ice cave, I pretty much just, um, I take it by game. If it's a game that's not going amazingly well, was that another requirement scroll? That we just picked up? Maybe. If the game's not going too well, I might sometimes run into Ice Cave to see which type it is, because maybe it's going to have, I don't know, a broad axe of freezing, or it might have some artifact armor or something like that. But where the run's going pretty well, I won't waste time. I never go into lab. There's a labyrinth on this floor. But because that's a maze, and you can't leave until you actually find the exit, it just it takes too long. I've accidentally ruined speedruns where I, w I went to go downstairs or I wanted to go yeah basically I just wanted to go downstairs but I accidentally went into the lab and it took seven or eight minutes or something and it was just game over. Alright so after doing left four we found both of our branches this time we've got spider and swamp. Um, swamp is much 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 better than shoals because Shoals is by far the most difficult and it's really hard. Um, you prefer Snake over Spider. Um, we're getting confused here. I'm, and the macro is making me tab, making me enter through all the you are confused 12 times. Oh dear. <laughs> so in Spider there are lots of um, annoying enemies that are difficult to fight and take longer. Um, the jumping spiders are hard because they jump everywhere. The orb spiders kite you and in addition to just having to chase them down, as you're running after them you often just reveal new enemies in the fog that you then have to fight. That was a potion of experience. I put it half into axes and half into fighting. I don't know if that's optimal but when you're real time running um, it's not something you get to think about. So I dove to D13, which was where vaults could be. Um, we found vaults and then I just dove to D15 to find the depths entrance. And now we're going to start doing our, um, our branches. This plus 14 obsidian axe is strong enough that I'm just going to try to fight hydras with it. Particularly as well, we have 41 AC. So giving hydras more heads and more attacks is not that threatening because they do 18 damage each max and we have 41 AC. Most of the time a Hydra's not even gonna hurt us. Brand weapon. Do I read it? I did one on the I had two brand weapon scrolls. I did one on the war axe. It made it flaming, so now if need be we could fight Hydras with it, but um yeah. 
the obsidian axe is good enough, particularly when it's making demons. And we can also we can always make McLeod demons to add to it. Swamp four already. That's pretty quick. Um, at this point, I know it looks like we're next to the vault because we've got a whole bunch of hydras running at us. So I've made some greater demons. We've been focusing invocations training, which means um, even though we're only in our first lair branch, we've got um, a very good failure rate. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but it's good enough that it seems to be working. And then we just got marked, which is always what you want. I, I thought we got marked, so let's just summon a million demons because the whole floor should be running at us. Although it doesn't seem to be. It's the undead one. Uh, these themed floors, the cold one and the undead one, are both really, really annoying when you're real time running. Um, somehow we just got. Oh, there's a broad axe on the ground, I think. So I just picked it up and branded it. I was hoping we could get um, vampiric, but it was also flaming. So yeah, these clouds, when you go in them, the game makes you confirm that yes, you really want to go in them. So you lose a lot of time just trying to run into and out of these clouds. If there, are, if there's a cloud, you have to do it twice as well because it says, "Do you want to go into the travel excluded area?" Yes. Do you want to go into the cloud? Yes. So you got to do it twice. It's really hard. I'm losing time here. To really go in. Yes. Please just get me out. Ah, speaking of speaking of annoying menus. Um. So one thing that's made the clouds easier is I discovered an option which allows you to answer prompts with um, always lowercase letters if you want. So normally you'd have to do an uppercase yes to walk into those clouds, but with the option you can do lowercase. My complaint is that just recently uh, it's been made that on level ups to do your strength, int or dex level up, you can only do a capital letter. And even that option of allowing lowercase prompts does not help you. So that's really annoying. We've got the undead ending here. We've also got, have a look at our corrosion. It's 28 right now. We're minus 28 corrosion. And we're still fighting stuff. I mean, mostly it's our demons, but uh, we should not be fighting at minus 28 corrosion. But what are you going to do when you're mesmerized by the obsidian axe? Alright, so this one, um, it's for a real time run, this is not a bad finish. You get a bunch of, uh, what are those things called? They're the beetles. They're the ones in the mummy. Um, I don't know, we'll see them in a sec. But they, they're really fast, they have batty movement, and they slow you. But it, as long as you buff up first and will summon a whole bunch of demons. I'm checking there to see if I have invis because they don't see invis. If you have invis, that makes this a lot safer. So we've got four demons. They are, I can't see, death scarabs. That's the one. Alright, so they went down pretty easily. So that's our second rune now at 40 minutes 30. That's actually really quick. Um, keeping this pace up, uh, this will be, well, I don't know actually. I mean, what what is a quote-unquote world record? And I actually don't know, because Man Man did 29 minutes, so I'm not sure how quickly he got his runes. I do know he had a broad axe of vamp in his run, though. When you're a deep dwarf of McLeb and you also have a vampiric broad axe, it just gets stupid. He would have probably been just holding down his 12-tab macro. <laughs> Fun. Anyway, uh, so we're in vaults. I've started just doing even vaults 5 now, um, not even bothering to go do depths and come back. Um, we just go all the way down. That was acquirement again. I keep going armor. I don't know if it would have been worth it. Oh no, I went... Okay. No, I went jewelry there. Because what I was thinking actually is that we don't have any RF at all. Unless we wear our plate mail of fire resistance. Um, but then we're losing a plus 10 crystal plate armor, so that's not ideal. Uh, but we did not get the RF on that jewelry roll. Vaults 5, here we go, we're buffing up. So we're going haste, my agi, and resistance. Alright, and normally I would read immolation here, but because I know the axe is summoning all these demons, 
Um, if I immolate, it's going to make them more angry and turn hostile. So rather than immolate and blow everyone up, I summoned some more greater demons to help. And that first fight went pretty well, but now we've got... Like, this is the second wave of things, I guess. Oh man, the, the capital letter. Yeah, this is getting a bit sketchy. I saw a gold dragon armor there too. Because I definitely did. In a little bit, I'm going to think that I'm going insane. Because when I... Can you see it there? I swear it's not in that menu. The gold dragon scales. I swear it's not. And I keep checking because I know I saw it. There was a gold dragon scales. Um, the reason I want it is... Not because I necessarily think it would be better than this plus 10 um, crystal plate armor, but I'm thinking if we don't find an RF ring somewhere, and I've had that happen in very promising runs before, then we're going to be in a lot of trouble because fighting orbs of fire without any RF is asking to die. And I've had it happen. Hey, look at all this jewelry we've got. They're all amulets of reflection. All right, which one's best? Plus four is. So you go with that one. All right, and um, we're looking for the RF ring, which is not forthcoming. Come on, game. I don't know what I'm doing here. Staring at the menu. I'm trying to drop items. I don't know. I'm probably panicking. <laughs> um, gold. It's there with gold D. But I swear it's not there just for G. I don't know. Game's trolling me. So I finally get the gold dragon armor. Um, I'm gonna struggle with manuals here. For some reason, manuals aren't on my auto pickup. Like there. Like why didn't we pick up that manual? So I have to go back. It's manual shields, but that should have been on auto pickup. Uh, so we go and get it. <laughs> um, that's pretty useful. Gives us plus four aptitude extra. There's another manual there. Another manual of shields, so two manuals of shields. And a manual of staves. <laughs> Alright, I should be getting out of here. The reason, normally I would get the rune and I would just try to leave, but I'm just really hoping that there's RF somewhere in that vault sloot. But there was not. So we've got we've got our three runes. It's not even 19 minutes yet, and we're in depths. So this is really fast. Doing a check, RF none. Just gold dragon scales or the fire resistance plate. I'm also checking my magic mapping scrolls. We've got four. Um, that was a very easy takedown of um, the enchantress. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Checking this, come on, there's gotta be, it's gotta be RF in this ring shop. No. Bought a, an MR, an extra MR ring. Um, Deep Dwarves have pretty good MR, so we've already got one MR ring. Um, at some point as well, there we picked up Bloodlust, so I'm like, well, why not, let's just go nuts. We've already got one detrimental item that mesmerizes us. Let's have another item with plus six slaying and random rage. <laughs> um, I think in hindsight that bloodlust actually probably slowed me down quite a lot because uh, you can't keep exploring when you're berserk, so you actually end up having to wait a lot, which I'm not used to doing playing deep dwarf. You don't wait, you just, you O tab and you sometimes heal. <laughs> so the whole waiting part of Bloodlust, I think, slowed me down considerably. So yeah, if I had this one over, uh, I'd take it off. And you're going to see as well that the Obsidian Axe is going to slow me down. So at this point, maybe it, the correct play would be to um, switch to a Broad Axe, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Like you can see here the fights, well I'm looking at items and stuff, but the fights will get considerably slower due to the berserk. It also kind of just lags the screen a bit.
All right, I really want that ring. That might be the RF ring in there. Like here. <laughs> trying to O-tab, but it's, you're too berserk, you're too berserk. Um, also, there is no point clearing this. I should be d diving to the next floor. The reason I'm doing it is because I've seen the ring and I, I know it might be an RF ring. So I'm thinking, surely Auto Explorer will make me pick it up. Uh, it's not though. Why? I'm like, where's the ring? Turns out you have to dig that open. So I go there. Oh wait, I don't have a digging wand. Fail fish. So that was quite a lot of time lost just there trying to dig in to a place with no digging wand. Well, first of all, just trying to pick it up and then trying to dig it. Uh, not good. We're down to depths four. So this is going pretty fast. Monsters everywhere. Um, that's all right. Just slamming that 12 tab button. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And depths five. <laughs> Wait, that that is stupid. That was like three different packs there. You hit the 12 tab button, no packs. That's stupid. That is not that is not a human playing crawl. Uh, so there's a broad axe there. So arguably at this point, maybe I should be using a broad axe over the obsidian one. Because uh, you're about to see, we get very trolled by this sort entrance. I don't know why I'm clearing around outside when I could just run in, but you see these guys, um, how they're here, <laughs> they're, they're sort of um, separated off the main path by that deep water, so when you get mesmerized you can't get to them. <laughs> it's really annoying, like this guy, I can't get to him, but I'm mesmerized so I can't go away from him either. And then I'm mesmerized to the bottom one, but I can't figure it out. I'm trying to fly over to the top one. Oh man. Yeah, so this is the obsidian axe trolling pretty hard here. Like demons, please, can the demons just do it? Maybe we can just not maybe I can just go to the Zot entrance. No, getting mesmerized by the dude over there. <laughs> oh, this is tragic. Come on game, come on game. Okay, I figured out eventually. If you gave me this again, now that I've done it once, and so you basically just had to run around the back to all the doors, would be the way to have done that. But um, that that did not go well that time. I don't know, oh, I, I'm testing the gold dragon scales. It's something like 10 AC less, but otherwise we have no other RF. So what are we gonna do? You need to have RF in Zot, because if you don't, you will just die to Orbs of Fire. Um, I think we have a lot of um, resistance potions, so an argument could be made that you could have used resistance potions, blah, blah, resistance potions for Orbs of Fire. Um, that was the the Four Winds Amulet, which again might have been the better pick so that we stopped doing all this berserk insanity. Uh, but I didn't even want to think about it, I just kept going. We got two magic mappings. I mapped Zot 1 because that's your most dangerous floor. There's only one upstairs. And I think I keep the last one for Zot 5, but that's probably incorrect because you can normally work out pretty reliably where the Zot 5 end vault is. Yeah, that's his obsidian axe. Is that RF? 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 Curse Master Evasion. No. Not quite. Alright, it's uh, some very fast tabbing going on there. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Uh, the Cursed Toe, normally it's good to kill all of them, but when you're mesmerized, you can't. Actually, I'm wondering now. Um, when you have clarity, you don't get mesmerized, but I don't know if the obsidian axe is special because actually that, that might have been a bit of a, an awesome combo where, uh, put on the amulet of the four winds to get clarity and then use obsidian axe and we wouldn't get mesmerized. 
Do you know if that works? I feel like it should, but maybe it doesn't. Anyway, I pick. I chose not to do that, so can't know. Um, the cursed toe just before was very scary. Again, not being able to back away from it. Um, it can torment you. Is the main thing. Still no RF. I think I identify with these cloaks. So I think I'm panicking. There's not really any need to. We've got plenty of MR from Bloodbust that um, Cloak of MR doesn't really matter. We've got Poison Resistance already, that doesn't really matter. The ability to go Invis, I guess, would be okay, but... Oh man, yeah, this is a very nasty Vault too. Um, I feel like this, I don't know if this is new, but this seems like this shouldn't really be a thing. So it's got a bunch of different statues in here, but then there are... Cursed Skulls. So Cursed Skulls torment you um, and summon a bunch of monsters but they used to be uh, stationary so they couldn't move. They were like a statue. So I kind of suspect that maybe this vault was made when they were statues but they are now very fast so you can't even run from them. So in this statue vault to have really fast tormentors running after you seems kind of unfair, particularly because you're in Zot, so you might have, I don't know, you might have orbs of fire around, just running straight into the Zot 5 vault, there's a teleport trap, so we can't go that way, and then there's an alarm trap here, so what do you do, I figure, how bad can it be, right, we'll alarm everything to us, we'll buff up, we'll summon a bunch of demons, okay, so we've got two orbs of fire at once, that's kind of bad, but not too bad, Okay, three orbs of fire, six orbs of fire, eight orbs of fire. <laughs> okay, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now we're berserk. So we're fighting eight orbs of fire at once. Um, <laughs> as well, that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we've killed one, but we're fighting nine. There's a new one that's ten. Ten orbs of fire at once. <laughs> Eleven, there's a new one. We're, so we're kind of killing them, but their new ones come in. Alright, so our Berserk ran out, we're on 15 HP. This is not good. Uh, the only thing to do really is to start healing, to try to out-heal them. And then my plan's going to be to try to teleport away. Because we are not fighting that. Particularly not... We're still hasted, but we're slowed as well. So I've got... I'm waiting for the teleport, and then I'm just spamming heal. We've still got 16 magic points left, so... We shouldn't really have any issue with um, with running out of mana, but that's that's a really unlucky Zot there. One side was teleport trapped, the other one had the alarm trap, and then it turned out that this is a Zot with 700 million orbs of fire. I thought rather than try to fight eight of them again, or however many are still there, I'm just going to jump on the teleport trap. Ideally, it would take us right into the chamber. We grab the orb of Zot and then we teleport back out. And there are more orbs of fire on this side. This guy is going super ham and just killing us. Um, and that's with one point of RF. Imagine if we didn't have any. I keep. But this guy is owning us too. I keep trying to summon demons, but we've actually only got four pips of piety, so I can't make greater demons. That's, that is the confusion that was going on there. I need demons! Help me, McCleb. Need demons. Alright, so we're going to grab the orb. Our problem here is that there's a teleport trap on the right and still 10 or 8 orbs of fire on the left. So I've picked it up. I tried to teleport. Turns out I have the blurry mutation vision, so um, I accidentally skipped the prompt, so we weren't teleporting. Um, we're getting very lucky here. The Cursed Toad decided not to torment us. Uh, teleport not good because it kept us on the right. And then it turns out that the Obsidian Axe is horrendously bad for orb running because it means you can't run, you have to fight things. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that. So we got rid of the Obsidian Axe. Um, no good to be. I'm trying to go GD0 and then I realize I can't. So I jump on the teleport trap. Not, we're still in. Not lucky. We just read a teleport. Basically need to teleport outside of here. Because, yeah, we can't get out the right. The left has a million orbs of fire. Not lucky. 
game is not being kind to us here. That's four or five attempts now, still in. Another attempt, not we're on the other side. Alright, so we're reading another teleport. <laughs> this is really not good. Um, I'm just healing again, so somehow, I don't know how, but we were at 15 match points just before, now we're down to two. So it looks like we got really unlucky with how MP rolls. Alright, we finally got out after about 9 or 10 attempts there. Alright, so now we're just going to GD0. It's at 3130, so um, when you consider that we had 3 runes at, I don't remember what it was, about 14 minutes or something. Um, anyway, the 3 runes were really fast, but now I've slowed down after finding blood loss quite a lot, and then we've had a pretty unlucky Zot. Um, so this time is not amazing, but uh, practicing and this is not good. So we've got a Hell Sentinel as well as a Berserk Gold Dragon. Uh, we've run out of mana, so I can't heal anymore. We have no choice but to fight. Uh, not even any heal wounds. Uh, dead. <laughs> so the run died. Uh, didn't end up being as fast as it could have been. Um, I'm just going to stop that there. Part of that is that um, I'm not used to playing this macro style. I think in if I were to practice it, I wouldn't be slamming the tab macro all the time. I'd be hitting O and tab all the time, and then when I see a pack or an enemy I want to just kill, I would then hit the tab macro, and that would make it lag a lot less. Um, also, yeah, a bit unlucky in Zot, and... Um, being slowed down by my item choices, the Obsidian Axe and the um, Bloodlust particularly. Also a bit unlucky in never finding an RF ring, um, which meant I had to go to the Gold Dragon scales rather than plus 10 um, Crystal Plate armor, but that's neither here nor there. I wasn't attached to this run or anything. Um, I just wanted to do a demonstration of how silly real-time speedrunning is right now. And if we don't do something about it, um, it's just going to get sillier. So I don't know what the answer is. Maybe, I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. We might have to sit down with some of... I doubt the devs will do anything. But maybe they might have to for future tournaments. But I think really it's just going to have to be people who are going to real-time speedrun if they want to be recognized as a world record they might have to agree to some sort of conduct because these multi-tab macros are just it's silly um, so yeah man man you technically have the world record but I don't I consider it's kind of like a cheating run so the actual world record is not mine anymore it's by power mode he did a, it was before the tournament, he did a 32.59 minute run. Um, although, I'm not 100% sure whether or not he used a multi-tab macro. I'm going to say that I don't think he did, but I mean, maybe he did. Anyway, it was basically, I think he's just an experienced player who's playing fast. He had some really sick RNG in that run. He worshipped Zom before finding McLeb. And Zom gifted him a ring that had RF plus on it, plus six slaying, I think, and maybe even MR. Like some disgusting ring on D5 or 6. And then he also found the Vamp Broadax. So it was just an insane run. And yeah, I've seen his RC file, so I know he wasn't doing anything crazy in terms of Lua scripts or anything like that. Um, and I doubt he was using a multi-tab macro. But anyway, the point I was trying to make is that I would say that's the world record, not Man Man's run or any future crazy multi-tab macro runs. I'm not going to persist with doing runs like that. I think it's totally against the spirit of trying to be a human. So um, I am going to try to beat Power Mood's run, and I'm going to do that just using the regular macros that we always have used for abilities and stuff. Um, not any multi-tab ones. So yeah, let me know what you think, if you have any great ideas on how we can solve this sort of thing. Um, 
And yeah, if you're hanging out for my next Let's Play, that should be going in the next two to three days. Not much longer now. I've been very busy IRL, but that's settled down now. So it shouldn't be too long. See you all next time.